All right, welcome to the tutorial on how to do hand embroidery, the back stitch. In this case, we're going to do the back stitch on the uh, antenna of the little b. All right, now you'll notice in this case that this is done after the entire background of uh, this project has been finished. Sometimes you'll do these hand embroidery stitches earlier and sometimes you'll do them a little bit later. The important thing is just to do them in the order that is outlined in your instructions. All right, so at this point I'm on step 13, hand embroidery, the black bee antenna and tips, and then we'll go from there. Let me show you what that looks like here on your pattern. You actually will have an area that points out that this is the hand embroidery. We're looking at the antenna, and in this case, we're going to do a back stitch with one strand of black embroidery floss. The reason why I know it's black embroidery floss and not yarn is because it will tell you in the parentheses right below it. All of these little hand stitches are done with floss that is black and of course is also included in your kit. But say for example, I go down to this area that says hand embroidery. This is for the leaves. We're gonna do the lazy daisy stitch with one strand of yarn in this case. Yarn is gonna be the grass green color. So anytime there's a hand embroidery stitch, always note how many strands you're using and whether you're gonna be using embroidery floss or yarn. All right, let's go ahead and do the first stitch, which is the antenna back stitch of that bee. Okay, I've actually unwound some of my black floss in here, and because it said the one strand, I'm going to just make sure and pull one strand from there and set aside the rest. Now remember, you had two needles in your kit, hand needles, and one is larger for yarn and one is smaller for embroidery floss. The smaller one can also be used for attaching things like buttons. Now make sure and tie a knot in the end. I'm going to first show you how to do a back stitch using this diagram. When you go to do any type of back stitch, you'll have some type of line to follow, right? So in this case, it's going to be the antenna. What you want to do is first start by going up from underneath your fabric in on point A. When you've done that, you're going to bring your, your thread all the way to the top and then go down at point B. Now you're going to go skip a little portion maybe about an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. It's really up to you how long you want your stitches. But at point C, that's when you're gonna go up at point C from underneath the cloth, and then you're going to go back down to point B. From underneath the cloth, you're going to go to point D, and then up through the cloth, and go put your needle back down to point C. See what's happening underneath and over? If you're going down at point C, you're now gonna move your thread up through point E, go up and go back down point D. By doing this, you're creating a solid line of stitches. Let me show you what that looks like with the B antenna. Okay, so let's do that back stitch here on the antenna. And really what you could do is certainly just eyeball this because now it's on top of the yarn. Or if you felt more comfortable, you could draw it out with your water soluble pen so that you have some kind of line to follow. Personally, just eyeballing it is gonna give you probably a, you know, a look that's gonna be just fine. But if you want to pin it out a little bit, you can absolutely do so. And then uh, just use a spray bottle of water at the very end to take out those blue lines. All right. So as I demonstrated with the diagram, you're going to start here at point A in this case and bring your thread up. 
and then go down about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. The length is up to you at point B. Now there's no point A or point B labeled here, but in your mind, you're, that's what you're thinking about. Now, because this is on top of yarn, you want the thread to stay on top of the yarn so it can be seen. So just make sure you don't pull too tight. If you pull too tight, it's gonna go down into the fibers of the yarn. Just give it a little tug and keep it up above the yarn, okay? Now I would be going up point C, right? Do you see how I skipped a little area? Bring it all the way up with a gentle pull and go back down to where I was at point B. Now I'm gonna skip another little space underneath Give it just a little gentle pull so your floss stays on top and go down to the previous stitch. See why this is called a back stitch? It's going to give you a nice solid line to work with. And pretty soon you'll be done with a B antenna. Continue this process till you have the second antenna and then you'll be ready for the French knot.